مرحبا اليوم راح نتكلم عن الخبر المقدم الخبر المقدم is also known as fronted predicate the main takeaways for this are that Arabic sentences cannot start with an indefinite so any kind of sentence can't start any kind of jumla ismiya can't start with an indefinite these flipped sentences put the khabar first what we call al khabar al muqaddam so as not to break this rule existential and possessive sentences are the main examples of this so mostly you'll see this in existential and possessive sentences later on you will see other examples of this that get more complicated but for the moment this is the main use of this sort of flipped sentence when you negate these sentences you use the fusha word laysa in amia as with many things we negate it with ma for the past tense we just add the word can or can bil amia we don't actually have to conjugate the verb in this particular case so it's really easy to say these in the past tense first of all we have to think about how we express existence in arabic this is a very useful thing that you do a lot you want to say there is a person in this room there is nothing in my bag there is there are there are people in this room in arabic we use uh, a special word for this in both fusha and amia and it usually comes at the beginning of the sentence so in fusha we say hunak you need to memorize this word you need to know this word because anytime you read something in fusha you'll probably see at least one sentence that starts with hunak bil amia we say fi notice that this final ha is just a writing convention to distinguish it from fi meaning in it's pronounced exactly the same but it's helpful to sometimes distinguish what i mean is there exists as opposed to there is something in we usually use these words and express existence the first time we talk about something and telling a story right so we're telling someone something about a person but we have to say that this person exists first right so if you're gossiping about a cute girl in your class for example you'd say hunak bin jamila fi safa biologia uridu an adhhaba ma'ha li sinema that would be in fusha in amia we'd say fi bint halwa bi safa biologia bidi aruh ma'a a sinema in this example this is the first time probably of course not the last time unfortunately that our listeners are going to ever have heard about this girl right so we're introducing it for the first time that's the point of expressing her existence we do something very similar with possession right we're talking about things we have or people who are related to us right in both fusha and amia we can use and but there's also this other set of words we have la bil fusha so li lak etc or il so ili ilak which is basically synonymous with and there's a little bit of difference in how they're used but you'll catch you'll pick that up over time of course the question is what does and really mean it doesn't actually mean to have it's not a european type word or an english type word where we have a verb that means to have originally it meant something like at or near and it still does so we can say for example that somebody is andel bab that means they're waiting at the door right we can ask like mean andel bab who's knocking right so right here we have a nice picture of shabab andel bab right they're at the door i found this by doing a google search of andel bab and here's some shabab andel bab so a sentence like andi sayara obviously you didn't have sayaras in the olden days but it originally meant something like a car is near me but everyone just understands that to mean i own a car of course this means that you can't really say and about a place like a university or a building or something since that would just imply that something's nearby right because if we're talking about a place the place meaning of and is more salient so we use the word fi to express possession for places so if we say fi jami'at rod island to law mumtazin what we're saying is within the space of the university of rhode island we have some great students if we use the word and it would imply something about them being at or waiting not quite in the university per se so if we say on the jamiat rhode island to law mumtazin it almost implies that you have a bunch of students standing out there 
on Kingstown Road waiting to get into the into the university. So these flipped sentences, the way to think about it, really thinking about it, is that when we say Andi Sayara, we need to think about what's being talked about. What is the point of the sentence? What is the subject of the sentence? We're not really talking about me, right? I have a car, yes, but the whole point of the sentence isn't necessarily revolving around me. We're not really talking about possession, right? The word and isn't really the subject of the sentence because it's kind of hard to have the subject of a sentence be possession. What we're talking about is the car, right? The, the thing that is having information said about it is Sayara. Of course, Sayara is Nekara, indefinite. And the rule that I said at the beginning, we can't put it as the beginning of a sentence because a jumla cannot start with a Nekara word, Bilarabi. You just can't start a sentence with an indefinite word, Bilarabi, right? Even though Sayara, as we have just seen, is the subject, the Mubteta, we can't have it at the beginning of the sentence. So what's our solution? We just put it at the end of the sentence. So we can't say really, Sayara Andi. It's, it's no good. It, it starts with a Nekara word. So what we say is, Andi Sayara. And that is Mumtastic. Since the khabar of the sentence, the information about the subject, right, the khabar is telling us about the subject, is now at the beginning of the sentence, we call it al khabar al muqaddam which is the khabar that has made been put at the front, the fronted predicate. Now, we can analyze these sentences, and it's, it's useful to remember that they're different than normal jumla ismiya. But don't worry so much about the analysis as the functions of the sentence. So, andi tulab qatar. So, andi tulab qatar. And is the khabar. And tulab qatar is the mubtada. For example, we say, fi hadha shara nas katir. Fi hadha shara is the khabar al muqaddam, and nas katir is the mubtada. Think about it this way. There are many people talking about nas katir is the subject. Well, we're talking about is these people, and the information is the news about them. You can't necessarily ask the question, well, what about in the street, right? If we're trying to talk about a subject, you have to be able to talk about it, right? You can't really talk about in the street. But you can ask, what about, you know, those many people that we were talking about? And you can say, oh, they're in the street. To negate these sentences, in Amiya is easy. Just put in a ma. We often will use ma to negate almost anything. The only exception to this is when we say mu, which we usually use to negate in between a mubteda and a khabar. Usually the khabar is like an adjective, right? Asaf mu sahab. Asaf sahab, inshallah. Right? But if we're talking about and or fi, etc., we just say ma. Ma'andi sayara. Bil fusha is a negative word for a lot of different contexts. For present tense verbs, we use a word la. For past tense verbs, we use ma, just like in amia. And for any sentences, we use this word laysa. So, bil fusha, we say asaf laysa sab. Or we'd say laysa andi. Sayara. You need to recognize this word, since it's in lots of writings in Fusha. If you're reading through a text in Fusha and you see Lysa, you need to know what it means. And it means ma, or mu, right? Know that that relationship exists. To make the past tense version of these sentences, it's really, really easy. You just add the word can, or in Fusha we say kana, you get a little fatha at the end. If we want to put an ex existential or a negative sentence in the past tense, either of these, we just, or sorry, if you want to put a, an existential or a possessive sentence in the past tense, we just add kana, andi sayara jadida. Kana andi sayara jadida, bes ken fi hadis, hadis kabir, right? I had a car, had an accident, I no longer have the car, right? Fi imtahan al yom, ken fi imtahan right? So we can talk about the past tense. The same is also true for biddi. You don't conjugate biddi, so you never say kunt biddi. What you say is can biddi. It acts just like and. So, can biddi ekel pizza? That's mafi pizza bil cafeteria. Or, can bidda te sefra beris? 
but it's not kananda and masari. Right? In both these cases, we're talking about biddi and bidha in different sentences, but ken stays exactly the same. Easy. Sahil. <laughs>